Good morning, boys and girls. Uh, welcome back to class. Today, I'm going to tie for you another pattern from a friend, Andrew Grillos. Um, this one is called the user friendly. And uh, um, if you're familiar with Andrew's patterns, they're uh, they're all sort of guide client patterns. Um, um, guide guide pattern sort of means that it's a quick, easy fly to tie. Um, client patterns, which I think are more useful and viable. Um, uh, tend to be flies that are easy to see and uh, easy to maintain um, and kind of kind of take the, the guesswork out of, of keeping the fly up on the water uh, in the case of a dry fly and uh, uh, just makes the overall job of fishing the fly a little easier. And uh, um, this is the mayfly version of uh, so many of Andrew's patterns that have got this little foam and, and uh, poly yarn and rubber legs. Um, and this is sort of tied in a mayfly profile. Uh, so this one is called the, the user friendly and you know, I've dressed it up a little bit. I put some color on the legs and um, kind of cleaned it up a little. Um, I don't know about cleaned it up, but, but gave it my own little spin. Um, but I'm gonna show you how, how to do it. Um, I'm gonna pull that hook out of the vise and then I'm gonna find my other hook here that I set aside. And what I've got here, uh, I've been tying more and more on this hook. This is a new hook from Umqua. Uh, the XC110, um, which is a standard shank dry fly hook, and uh, true barbless and black finish. Um, and I just like this hook, um, so I've been tying on it a bunch lately. Um, I just wash my hands and put a little wax on here so that I'm not quite so slippery. And I'm going to start off with some 14 knot black Vivas thread. And I'll start this thread, oh, midpoint or so on the hook. And what I want to do is come back to about the point. And at that point, I want to take a tiny little pinch of dubbing. Um, and I'm going to tie you a purple one here. Uh, but you can obviously tie this in whatever color, whatever color you wanted. Um, and what I want to show you here is that's the pinch of dubbing I've got. It's a tiny pinch. We're going to make just a little ball. Um, so what I want to do here is put this tiny little pinch of dubbing on very little thread, like so. And I'll use this bare thread to sort of work back. Actually, I want to back that dubbing off a little bit. Work back to the apex of the bend, and that's right where the, the shank and the bend come together. Um, and at that point, right on the apex, you can see it's just slightly around the bend. I'm gonna build just a tiny little ball of dubbing there, right at the bend. And that's gonna help us to split our tails. Um, so I'm now going to take some tailing fibers, um, and I'm going to take, um, on a 14, let's take six. And I'll clip those out, try to keep those fairly even, and I want to measure those about a shank length long. Um, they can be a little longer than that even. <clears throat> but I'm going to tie these in right in front of that little ball of dubbing. And get a little band of thread over them. Um, and then what I want to do, since I've got six of them, is I want to split them three to a side. Um, and I know you can't really see what I'm doing here, but I'm just sort of dividing them three to a side. And what I'll do is I kind of hold on to the near side and push my thumbnail against the, or my fingernail against the far side. And I'll wrap back over them right up to that nub of thread and let that nub of thread sort of separate those, like so. Let me get that thread moved out of the way, and you can see we've got a nice widespread tail. So now I'm going to come and wrap forward over those butt ends. Um, now let me let me talk about this part. I had one of the guys in my fly tying class ask about this, um, about wrapping over a loose material like this um, without moving it. And if I keep my thread tension tight all the way around, you can see I'll push those butt ends from my near side of the hook all the way around to the bottom, and they'll come back up to the top. Um, the way I can get from point A to point B without moving those butt ends is where I attach or where I apply the thread tension. So as I come over the top of the of the hook, uh, my thread it's not slack, but I pretty much let off the tension altogether. I'll come all the way around, and then down here at the bottom, I kind of snap the thread back toward myself. And you can kind of see that as actually showing that really well once it's got some more more slack in it. You can see as I tighten that, that keeps those on top. Um, so it's just sort of a sped up version 
of that basic maneuver. It's kind of loose over the top and tight across the bottom um, to keep those those tailing fibers or whatever it may be um, up on top of the hook. So that's that's how you do that. So I'm going to cut those buttons out, and now I've got uh, a piece of one millimeter razor foam. Um, this one's black, obviously, um, but you can again tie this in whatever colors you like. Uh, the first version of this, Andrew Tidy told me, was a, for a PMD, so um, yellow foam on top, yellow dubbing. Um, we're doing sort of an attractor -y sort of version. Um, and I've cut this to a taper. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to tie it in right up here where I cut those buttons off, and I'm going to wrap back over it all the way back to the base of the tail. And I want to make sure I'm right flush up to that tail. Yep, like so. Then I'll bring my thread just past the hook point again. So now I'll dub the, the abdomen. And I'll take some more of that same purple dubbing. And I'm tying a 14 here, so this is a relatively big fly. Um, but you can, you know, obviously certainly tie this in much smaller sizes. Got one random strand of weird flash in that dubbing that doesn't belong. So I'm going to apply this dubbing fairly thin. Relative to the hook size anyway. And I'm going to wrap back to the bend using up that bare thread so that I get my first turn back here uh, just in front of that foam tie down. And then I'll work forward. Fairly level body so far, and then I'll start to taper it. And you can see I can kind of work back and forth here a bit to taper this up. And as I run out of dubbing, I'm going to come around on bare hook. Um, now, once I get there, I want to make a thread base up to the hook eye and all the way back again. And I'll take this piece of foam forward over the top of the body, um, and I don't stretch it real tight, and I'm going to anchor it down. I uh, get a couple turns on it, and then I just want to make sure that it's square on top of the hook, like so. Uh, now, while we're here, I'm going to bump this thread up to just behind the eye. Not right flush to the eye, but just behind the eye. And I'll tie it in again. And then we can kind of bind this intersection, or in between there, down a little bit. So now, this is a uh, sort of trademark of Andrew's patterns. Um, he cross hatches the foam with his thread. So I'm going to spin this thread up a bit so it doesn't spread out. Um, keep in mind, I tie left handed, so as I wrap, I flatten my thread. So uh, when I spin my thread, I'm generally cording it. And what I'm going to do is just spiral wrap, evenly spaced turns, back to the bend, like so. And then once I get there, I'm going to come forward and form X's with those wraps like that. Um, so we've kind of cross-hatched it. Um, that makes that foam a little tougher. You can see from the bottom we've got uh, just dubbing showing. And on top we've got uh, uh, got the foam that's going to add us some, some flotation in there. Um, Alright, so now I'm going to take a clump of uh, Andrew uses McFly lawn, but I'm going to use macrame yarn. And this is smoke-colored macrame yarn. I cut this piece down just a little bit, make it a little easier to work with. But about a you know what would be a strand of McFly lawn anyway. Um, and I'm going to tie this in in the middle of that thorax area with a couple X wraps one way and a couple X wraps the other way. You want to try to make those X wraps good and tight just to keep those wings bundled together. So you're just tying that in like spinner wings so far. Now to stand these upright. I'm going to pull those two together, and I'm going to take a wrap or two of thread around their base. Um, and this is just going to pinch them up and together a bit. Kind of twist those up a little. Give you an idea of what we got. So now we have two wings that are just slightly propped up. Um, we'll be able to prop those up a little bit more with our, uh, with our dubbing as we work our way through there. Got one weird strand. We'll get rid of him. Now I'm going to take a couple strands of fine round rubber legs, um, and these are just white. And I'm going to take one strand here, and I'll bump my thread up to just behind the eye again, and I'm going to tie one in on my near side, 
and I'm going to wrap back over it right up to the front edge of the body. And I'll cut that. Um, I'm not too concerned with the length just yet, but you see I just cut that shorter so it's easier to work with. And then I'll take my other strand and just in the reverse order, um, do the same thing on the far side. So I'll catch this back in here right up against the front edge of the body. And once you've got those in, you can sort of arrange them so that they're along the sides of the fly. I know you guys can't see what I'm doing there, but it's a little more important right now that I see what I'm doing. So stop being so selfish. Um, so now I'm going to cut that other leg just a little shorter. So you can see we've just tied those in along the sides of the thorax there. So now I'm going to take a grizzly hackle feather. Um, this is a neck feather, um, you know, sized about a size 14, you know. And I'm going to strip the butt end. So I've exposed some bare stem there. And I do like to go just a little bit more on the inside of the turn, so I'll strip just a half turn there, like so. And trim that stem down just a little. Um, and you can see if these wings are in your way, you can kind of just roll them together, um, and they'll kind of hold together a little better out of your way like that. Um, so I'm going to tie this feather in with the inside of the feather toward the hook, right up at the front edge of the body. And I'll come forward and anchor that stem down all the way through. Um, so now on the thorax, Andrew uses ice stub, and that's where he and I differ, um, especially on a small fly. Ice stub is very porous. It's hard to keep floating. Um, so I'm going to use the same dubbing that I used for the, for the abdomen. If you were tying this in a bigger size, uh, where you could kind of not have to worry so much about the, the buoyancy of the dubbing, um, I think ice dubbing would be fine. I think on big stonefly stuff like that, it's fine. Um, but on a little fly like this, I don't, I don't love ice dub for, for dry fly stuff. Uh, so I'm going to stick with the same dubbing. And I'm going to take this dubbing, and I'll start it here just at the front edge of the, of the abdomen. And I'm going to dub on either side of the wings, and kind of build this thorax up a bit. You can see how I can work back and forth, and I'll end with my thread just behind the eye there like so. So now I'm going to take that hackle feather and I'm going to start to wrap it through the thorax. Um, and these are spaced out wraps. So I'll usually get three behind the wings here. And I'll sweep the wings back, put the next turn right up against the front edge of the wings, get another turn in there, and then I'll tie that feather off with a few tight turns of thread there behind the eye and then nip the end out like so. Now I'm going to fold everything back and up out of the way, put a little thread head here, and that's going to prop that piece of foam up a bit. And this is where we will whip finish. Um, as soon as I find my whip finisher, give myself a little more thread here. I'll sweep those legs back out of the way. Sneak my whip finish in. Now this front piece of foam I'm going to cut off about a fourth of a shank length long. Just a little stub there. Um, you can see that previous sample I actually folded that back, kind of made a little loop. Um, it seemed a little bulky. I was sort of free ball in there, kind of playing with the pattern a little bit. Um, so I'm going to leave that just, just as it is. Just a little flat piece of foam sticking out the front. Um, we've got our two wings here and I'm going to pull those up and trim them just a little longer than the hackle. It's about a shank length long is what we're shooting for here. So I'll trim those off. And you can kind of prop those apart from each other like so. And now we're going to come in and um, the reason we left those legs long is we're going to come in and, and do some color. Um, and this is the fun part. So uh, since I'm tying a purple one, I'm going to start with a purple Sharpie marker. Um, and I'm going to make a, a band out here toward what will be the end of the legs. And this is just color matching. I mean, I got a whole pile of Sharpies here. I might as well use all the colors, right? You can see I'm just rolling the edge of the marker against the leg to make a wide band. And then I'll come in with my black marker. 
and I like to border the purple with a band and then mark up the leg. Uh, so I'll do the same thing on all of them. Those back legs are going to end up a little bit longer. And I try to get the same amount of bars on the two front legs and on the two back legs, but it's not exactly even. It's probably not the end of the world. So we've added a little, little matching tone on tone there. Um, this leg on this far side is a little tweaked, so I'm going to pull them up. There we go. Get them a little more lined up where we want. Now I'm going to come in and just at the end of those bars, I'll nip the rest of that off. Um, you want to be careful you don't cut your legs off when you do that, or cut your tails off when you do that. Like so. Now the last thing that you want to do, and this is sort of hard to show, what I want to do um, is come in and trim a V out of the bottom of the hackle. And if you're tying right-handed, it'll be real easy for you to come in from this side. This is a left-handed cut for me, which is not so easy. So I typically will take the fly out of the vise and turn it upside down. And I'm just going to cut a notch across the bottom of the hackle. And you got to do a little cleanup typically. So that you end up with a V cut in the bottom. Um, that just sets the fly a little lower on the surface of the water. You can see what I did there. And that is our user-friendly, uh, sort of dressed up, fancy, fancified version uh, with those little colored legs. But you can you can leave them just black and white barred, which is what Andrew does. Um, but I could never leave well enough alone, so I got to put a little color on there. Um, but that is the idea of this little bug. Sort of an attractory mayfly. You know, it's got a, um, a little bit more than the, than the usual pattern, so um, good searching pattern, but can also be a specific hatch pattern, you know, when tied in the right colors. Um, but kind of a fun little fly and very buoyant, very easy to fish, um, very easy to see. Um, like I say, the difference between a client fly and a guide fly are, uh, um, you know, there's a big difference between the two. And this is a, uh, this is a client fly. This is a fly that's easy to see and easy to use. Um, Andrew, <clears throat> Andrew has guided all over the world and uh, has fished even more places. And is just uh, one of the most uh, well qualified, I'll say, most qualified anglers I've ever, ever met. Um, and just a, a wealth of information. He's, he just knows a ton of stuff, and he's just a super cool guy, one of my favorite people. Um, so there you, there you go. Uh, that's Andrew's user-friendly. I hope you guys enjoyed that one. I'm Charlie Craven, and uh, you should like and subscribe because there's lots more videos coming. Thanks for watching, guys. Take care.